My big learning points for managing remote team dynamics. I developed this podcast for leaders who are building new teams or have established teams that are struggling with performance. Working remotely with multiple clients following the outbreak of COVID-19, I've had to rethink how to conduct team building and performance coaching programs. I'd like to share my learning points on managing remote team dynamics, discussing the issues and approaches to address them. First, the situation. Remote working has highlighted both the complexity and uniqueness of teams. Each team has its own set of circumstances and personalities, and every person's family situation is different. Therefore, it's important to get to know team members before diving in. Let's take a new team. It has yet to build alliances and engage stakeholders. It needs to form an identity and create common goals. And it may include people who have just been hired and who no one has met in person. And then for an established team, relationships will have formed, some in person, some virtual. And if the team hasn't reached its potential, working practices may be inefficient, or poor team dynamics could be impacting performance, as well as team health. Issues that can amplify the situation when working remotely include diverse subcultures that may not be integrating effectively, established cliques that are more likely to continue unless actively managed, and relationships where trust is absent, leading to inefficiency such as over-attendance at meetings. We can apply systems thinking to determine the root cause of these problems and to comprehensively address them. Questions and some answers. We know that teams require clarity, alignment, trust, constructive debate and accountability, and all these elements need to work in tandem. An important question is, how much should we be trying to understand all this complexity and manage it through leader intervention versus creating the conditions for the team to solve their own problems? To seek answers, I've been conducting diagnostics, undertaking one-to-one confidential interviews, inviting team members to share their feelings and views in a safe environment, and then analysing feedback and producing anonymised summaries that I share with the entire team. I encourage team members to propose solutions to issues they are facing, not just to raise them. My experience is that we get the most success by fostering self-governing teams that operate freely and fluidly and seek to solve their own problems. This includes determining when to meet, encouraging shared leadership, and by working in small groups, not always as an entire team. To do this, they need to trust and respect each other. From my experiences, I identified five key actions to improve team dynamics. First, create a safe and inclusive environment. We need to embed inclusion into our daily interactions. Ensure all team members have the opportunity to speak. Allow them to be heard and understood. We need to walk a mile in their shoes. Second, build coping skills. Some members may be struggling more than others. Provide one-to-one coaching to help team members manage challenging relationships. Encourage them to take care of themselves first and then take the first step to improve these relationships. Third, uncover toxic relationships. Within a team, there will be multiple one-to-one relationships. Recognize any divisive relationships that threaten to derail the team and develop strategies to address them without apportioning blame, such as role modeling healthy and constructive debate. Fourth, activate the team. Encourage the team to create team norms and team goals and to brainstorm solutions to problems and ask them to each do something new or different to help the team. And fifth, Empower the team. Trust and treat the team as professionals. Provide education on key leadership topics such as influencing and decision making. And encourage them to take ownership and involve sponsors only when an issue is beyond their scope or impossible to resolve as a group. I.e. stakeholder input becomes a last resort, not a first. In summary, A remote team may find it more difficult to address the complexity of circumstances it faces. 
empowerment, combined with insightful interventions, can help the team progress.